This is the third Dynafrips DAC I review. That's driven by the remarkably good price to sound quality ratio. This time even absurdly high sampling rates are supported next to a lot of inputs. But if you want a DAC for the sound quality, stay tuned. The Venus 2 has the same cabinet as the Pontus. The buttons and LEDs are identical but were located slightly different. We will see that internally differences are bigger, but let's first see where the Venus 2 has its place in your stereo. The analog outputs are connected to an amplifier that drives a set of loudspeakers or headphones. As a source you can connect your computer, laptop or smartphone over USB to the DAC. If you don't want the computer in the listening room, you can place it elsewhere in the house and use either a network player or network bridge. It is connected to the computer over the network and to the DAC over SPDIF, TOSLINK, USB or I2S depending on the outputs your source has. Remote player control is usually done over a tablet or smartphone, but that depends on the player software on the computer or the network player. The Venus 2 itself does not offer remote control. Since it has 7 inputs you can connect lots of other digital sources too, like the digital sound outputs of a TV, game console, DVD or CD player. As said, the Venus 2 uses the same sturdy aluminium cabinet as the Pontus, that stands on 3 high conical feet. It measures 320 by 330 by 80 mm and weighs 8.5 kg. On the front we see the standby button, this time in the middle of the front. Then two smaller buttons to select inputs with above it smaller LEDs that indicate the chosen input. Then a phase switch with LED signaling that inverts the polarity of the outputs, a button that switches over sampling on or off with LED signaling, a mute button and a button that, in combination with other buttons, lets you select a steep or slow filter and the I2S input between several wiring schemes as described in the Pontus review. The remaining LEDs are there to indicate the sampling rate. It shows the base frequency 44.1, 48 or DSD, plus when needed a multiplier. If 48 kHz and 2 times are lit, 96 kHz sampling is used. If 44.1 kHz 2 times and 8 times are lit, the sampling frequency is 2 times 8 is 16 times 44.1 kHz or 705.6 kHz sampling. On the rear we see the centrally placed FuruTech audio grade IEC main socket. Then write the USB audio class 2 input, the I2S input on HDMI, a TOSLINK optical input, two AES EBU inputs, a SPDIF input on BNC and a SPDIF input on RCA. On the output side we see the single ended analog outputs on RCA and the balanced analog outputs on XLR. Like in the Pontus, the power supply is encapsulated in a 1.5 mm thick metal cage that is screwed top down on the bottom of the cabinet. It holds two large O-type transformers, one for the digital circuits and one for the analog electronics. This is the photo of the Pontus power supply. The Venus 2 holds three rows of somewhat smaller capacitors. Denafrips obviously adhere to the adagio that many small capacitors instead of some larger ones lead to better sound quality, a view that is shared with other manufacturers. Above the power supply a large circuit board is found with, in between, a mu metal sheet for extra shielding. In the lower right corner of the circuit board we see the inputs. The USB audio class 2 input is sent to the Amanero board. The other inputs go to the AKM AK411 A transceiver that outputs an I2S signal. This signal is then buffered by a FIFO buffer and passes the DSP on the Amanero board for filtering. The actual digital to analog conversion is done with four banks of 0.005% precision resistors. Per channel one bank for the positive and one for the negative part of the signal, resulting in a balanced signal. 
These resistors allegedly are hand picked and matched. The small ICs next to them do the switching instructed by an Altera Max 2 processor per channel. Two Crystex CCHD957 Femto clocks are the masters of timing, one for 44.1 and one for 48 kHz base sampling frequencies. When using either the USB or I2S input, the maximum PCM sampling frequency is 1536 kHz, which is 32 times the base frequency of 48 kHz. On the same inputs, DSD 1024 can be played, which is 16 times higher than DSD 64. The main question is if any sampling rate above 384 kHz leads to a better sound quality. Many will even say that 192 kHz suffice. This, by the way, is the maximum sampling frequency that can be played over SPDIF, TOSLINK and AES-EBU. Some digital players offer dual AES-EBU that uses two AES-EBU connections in parallel to enable double the sampling frequency. This is supported by the Venus 2. The next question then is how to get material at those extremely high sampling rates. Also interesting is to see the difference between the Pontus I reviewed earlier and the Venus 2. And let's start with the crystals. The Venus 2 uses temperature compensated femtoclock precision crystals while the Pontus uses simpler voltage control types. The Amanero boards look the same but the Venus 2 can handle higher sampling rates and allegedly uses new filter algorithms. It might be that the same board is now also available for the Pontus. When we look at the resistor banks we see far more resistors. These are specified at 0.005% precision where the Pontus has 0.01 precision resistors. It might be that the Venus 2 uses more resistors to middle out values. The capacitor banks also differ. Where the Pontus uses normal capacitors, the Venus 2 uses Wima and Evox MMK metal polyester long endurance reservoir capacitors that offer low ESR. And where the circuit board in the Pontus is screwed directly to the power supply, the board in the Venus 2 is soldered to wires that lead to the power supply. Due to the mu metal sheet between the power supply and the circuit board, screwing was no longer an option. And then one last detail. Where the Pontus uses normal ferrite filters on the AES EBU inputs, the ones in the Venus 2 are encapsulated in a kind of ceramic layer. So there are clear differences to be found between the two DACs. By the way, if you want to know how R2R ladder converters work, there is a chapter on that in the Pontus review. Apart from the initial settings you might want to make and that need a combination of buttons to work, operation is very simple. You step through the inputs by pressing the plus or minus button, select oversampling or non oversampling by pressing a button and the same goes for phase. Some might regret the absence of a remote control, but that's the only limitation I can think of. I of course evaluated the sound quality in my setup 1, but I have upgraded the amp in this setup from the highly tweaked AudioNote Soro SE tube amp to an Air AX520. This was more or less driven by the Pontus and the Venus 2 since I heard the potential of the DAX and was convinced that a better amp would reveal even more sound quality. The Venus 2 was already impressive using the AudioNote. But once connected to the air, I was rather blown away. Let me try to explain this using the good old Viewmaster. Although visual depth perception works largely different from audio depth perception, the metaphor works rather nice here. The idea behind stereo audio is to recreate the original three dimensional environment. When done well, you will not only hear instruments spread from left to right, but also placed front to back in a virtual depth as if the drummer sits at your neighbors. There also will be a virtual acoustic environment that exceeds that of your listening room. If you watch a photo on your smartphone, you see objects spread from left to right. You also get some depth clues due to occlusion, the object in front covering a part of the object behind it. Size, objects in front are larger. Color depth, objects far away have limited color depth. Contrast, Objects at a distance have lower contrast 
and some other clues. When listening to a low quality stereo or a medium quality stereo poorly set up, you get the same kind of spatial information. It has a kind of depth info, but your brain knows it's fake, thus it must be a photo. When you watch a Viewmaster, the interocular information, the difference between what your two eyes see, gives some depth information too. What you see is cardboard objects placed in space. A medium quality stereo well set up produces a stereo image that's comparable. When you reach stereo nirvana, you hit true three dimensional instruments and singers that each have their own place in a three dimensional space that often goes beyond and above the space between your loudspeakers. You could even hear height, some instruments appear to, to be up higher than some others. The Venus 2 does this impressively good. It makes the sound very natural and relaxed since all spatial clues make sense to our auditory system. This is not unique, I know more DAX that can offer this quality, but you rarely experience this level at this price category. And then there are the voices. Men are they real? It doesn't matter if you listen to a 60s album or a contemporary recording, the voices are so real. Together it makes the Venus 2 so relaxed to listen to without being dull. But if the music is aggressive, it sounds aggressive and, of course, the low lows and the high highs are spot on while sibilance problems are almost absent. I was already very enthusiastic about the Pontis. The Venus 2 indeed is a step closer to Audio Nirvana. The Venus 2 has all the things that make me enthusiastic about the Ares 2 and the Pontus, but it takes it yet another step further. That was already clear when using the Audio Note amp, but the Venus 2 really shined when I installed the Air amp. That says something about the sound quality of the Venus 2, for the Air amp is truly high end. It's funny that the Denafraps DAX I reviewed earlier made me curious about the sound quality of the more expensive models. The Venus 2 did this again, so expect a review of a top model too. All Denafrips DAX are true grassroots devices. Energy and money is only spent on things that matter for the sound quality. All other things function well, but are limited to what is needed. The thick aluminium housing is there for rigidity, preventing vibrations to influence crystal behavior. The Furutec mains connector is there for better sound, and so on. But there is no remote control and no fancy display, that by the way would have influenced the sound quality negatively. Nor is there a volume control. Only a good sound quality that is found in clearly more expensive DACs. And on that bombshell I'll end this video. There will be another video next Friday at 5 pm Central European time. If you don't want to miss that, subscribe to this channel or follow me on the social media so you will be informed when new videos are out. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Many thanks to those viewers that support this channel financially. It keeps me independent and thus trustworthy. If that makes you feel like supporting my work too, the links are in the comments below this video and YouTube. I'm Hans Beekhuizen, thank you for watching and see you in the next show or on the HBproject.com. And whatever you do, enjoy the music. <laughs>